All right, in today's Touch Designer tutorial, we will be actually creating such a beautiful, liquid, colorful texture with very few components. And you'd be very surprised at how some small components can create such a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And as you can see that the kind of reflection that you get, the kind of colors which it actually brings out, uh, the, the level of vividness of the color that you actually get to see is just fascinating. You'd be wondering that it is just created based on these simple tops. So, well, let's just go ahead and create this beautiful artwork. So before we move ahead to the tutorial, this is my YouTube channel. The channel name is Digital Abstracts. You see so many different YouTube tutorials, my YouTube creations. Uh, there's a lot that I actually try and put it up here. Um, I'd really appreciate if you could go and subscribe to my channel. That would be really wonderful. And this is HLS Art Studios, my Instagram account. I would really appreciate if you could like and um, if you could follow me there. You would actually get to see a lot about myself here, uh, my creations, the other stuff that I do. There's, there's a lot that you would actually get to see if you, if you follow me on Instagram. All right, so let's get going with the Touch Designer tutorial. Perfect. So first thing first, let's go with noise. Uh, here, we will be starting with resolution and let's set it up to 1280 by 720p. Let's use the pixel format as 32-bit RGBA. Here we can see that there is so much of density, it's denseness here. Uh, it's because of the period as one. Let's change it to five. Let's have the amplitude as uh, 0.5. Let's have the offset as 0.25. Let's increase, uh, let's change the pattern of this noise from monochrome to color. So you can see the colors are coming up. Um, the last thing that we would want to do is animation of the TZ so that we see the noise is actually animated. So the animation can be done with ABS time dot seconds uh, into 0.1. So we need subtle movement in the uh, movement of the noise. If I go with 1.1, the movement is going to be very fast, which we definitely don't need it as a part of this assignment. Um, however, there are so many instances where we might go with such a fast basis of noise movement. But for now, let's just go with a simple stuff of uh, 0 0.1 as the multiplying factor. So this is one part that we have done it. Uh, let's copy this and paste it. So we have two noise tops. Uh, here, we will be enabling the monochrome. Uh, let's change the offset from 0.25 to 0.5. Let's reduce the period from 5 to 4. And let's have seed value as 2550. This is a random value. You can use anything and everything that you like. However, the most important thing is going to be make sure the TZ movement is matching with the movement of first noise that we have introduced. Right? Once this is done, we go ahead with displays as a top. And um, let's just apply these connections with, uh, with the noises that we have created. The one good thing that you would start to realize is it has the same size resolution of the first noise that we had created. Since the second noise was the copy of noise one, uh, we do not have any problems with that. The other thing that you need to know is about the format, which is 32-bit float, which allows you to provide more colors and the, the, the content which comes out as a part of final output uh, is very crisp. Uh, it has more data bit rate and that literally helps us. So this is my small network. Now let's go ahead and use null. And now is the time to use feedback. So let's start with feedback. Um, so I get my feedback, I get my level, I get my transform, and the last thing that I need is composite. Once this is done, 
let's arrange our nodes in a better way so that it looks neat and clean once this is done let's use the output of null to comp let's put the target top as our comp one and the operation that I'm going to put it up as a top. We need to make sure that null is the first preference set as a part of the input supplying to the comp or no, chop. So once this is done, we get to see some better result. However, we are still not there yet. There is still a little bit of work which is needed. Oh, uh, we, we actually saw how the specular look was coming up. Now that can be achieved by, by using uh, a top called as edge. So let's use edge. We're not going to change any values at this point of time here. Let's go and apply it. And let's use a composite. And you can see that there is something better turning out to be, right? Now this is good for now. Let's use blur. We'll be using blur top. Now the strength value or filter size value of blur is currently set to seven. We want to increase it to 32. And then let's use one more edge. And you can see the strength size of that edge is one. Let's increase it to 100. By doing this, we pretty much get some good results. And this will be applied to a displaced top. And here, we will be using displace weight from 1 to 0.1. Now let's disable the output of conf1 and let's go to displace. We see something really better turning up. There is a specular look which is coming up. Let's go and reset the feedback loop so at least we get some better results. Now there are a couple of operations that you can do. Let's use multiply. We will be multiplying the output of displace and comp2. Let's disable the output of displace2 and let's have null as the final output for us. And let's use level. Here we go and increase the brightness. We also increase the gamma. And we increase the contrast. And by doing this, we pretty much get the same output that we initially started our objective with. And this is very simple. In a very small set of network, you can create some of the beautiful, beautiful design and pattern. And this actually gives that liquidy look. It, it, it has that shine. It has that color. Um, it turns out to be very enchanting. Uh, it has that acid wash feel. Uh, it's very colorful, uh, very engaging. Um, it's, it's something uh, we can definitely go and put it up as uh, a wallpaper. Um, pretty much it, the output of this can be used in uh, the parties, events, or any place that, um, you know, we, we want some uh, vibrant color uh, to, to suit our walls. And um, this is where you can, you can actually create this entire stuff. Now, one thing which is very, very important to understand here is by using very basic tops, very basic tops, you can create some of the best outputs. So this, this pretty much gives us the kind of output that we wanted to go with. 
Uh, there are so many other options that you can go and try. You can increase the brightness to a uh, little more values such as 1.6. Um, you can increase the contrast so that gives more vivid um, and very bright look. The other thing that you could try is uh, there's this top, uh, the node that we have, and you can increase the strength. Um, currently, the strength was just one. You can increase it to four and you can see some better result with that. Um, pretty much you can play with the displays. Now this is too bright. Um, you can actually reduce the brightness to 1.45 and it still give you it still gives you that liquid look. The other the other things to play around is with uh, the noise itself. Currently, the period is set to be five. If we reduce the period to 1.6, it gives you that glitchy look. I know this output turns out to be amazing. Um, you can actually set to two, which is still better than uh, what we had earlier uh, with the very denseness of the screen. But yeah, this is this is much better than what we had. The other thing that you could do is you can use noise too and you can play around with that. Um, you can actually play with TX and uh, let's use the same uh, values for TY or T. Let's go with TY. Sorry, let's go with TX. And by changing that, you could actually see that liquid is actually flowing from um, minus X to plus X, which is like a directional move as compared to what it was just happening within that particular um, uh, z-axis. So depending on your choice, depending on how you would want to create your visuals, um, we can set it up values accordingly. The other option that you always have in hand is um, you can reset feedback for the keyboard. Um, the, the other stuff that you can try and do is you can go to noise and you can in, in, you can reduce the harmonic speed from 2 to little less, which is 1.4. By having 1.4, you see that the liquid has more, um, the, the, the liquid is more varied. Uh, it has higher texture. Uh, it has more um the liquid turns out to be better actually and uh, it has more specular look currently it is set to 1.4 we might change it to 1.7 and by doing 1.7 it has more vivid colors and it's giving that liquid texture um in a best possible way so yeah uh, there is a lot that you could do. There's a lot that can be played around with. Um, at this point of time, you can see with very small set of tops, you'll be able to produce really, really stunning outputs. Um, and yeah, give it a try. Uh, post it on your Instagram, post it on your social media. Uh, when you actually do that, please do tag me so that I actually get to know that there are people who are following my YouTube tutorials and uh, they are learning quite a bit new things. And, uh, you know, your creation will definitely make me happy. Do reach out to me for any questions or any information or any tutorial that you would want me to create. I'll be more than happy to produce uh, these beautiful tutorials on Touch Designer so that you can learn a lot. Well, at this stage, this is what I have for you. I'm saying goodbye from Sydney, Australia, and I'll come back with some new, more interesting and good tutorials so that you can learn something new every day. Thank you. Bye for now.